We are trying to improve aesthetic outcomes for women who uh, survive their breast cancer treatment and make surgery less of a challenge uh, in terms of cosmetic deformity, pain and other issues that uh, follow on from surgery. And so we're trying to sort of uh, reduce the extent of surgery. So reduce rates of mastectomy, that is breast removal. And one of the methods of doing this is by actually uh, filling the breast, especially when it's a smaller breast, uh, with tissue from either just beyond the breast uh, or using fat, uh, fatty tissue, if there's spare tissue around the body. Uh, we can do what commonly people know as liposuction, but we do it in a way that harvests the fat to then actually transplant it into the breast and so rejuvenate and reshape the breast uh, using those techniques. In the primary breast cancer scenario, we have uh, women with either very extensive breast cancer where the volume of the actual cancer removal is quite large in comparison to the volume of the breast. And often women with smaller breasts where there's less drop to the breast, that sort of thing, they're the ideal candidates. And especially if they've got a little bit of spare tissue around the sides or the uh, underneath the breast, where we can then transplant that tissue and move it into the breast. And so we rebuild the breast by removing tissue from outside and around the breast or indeed other parts of the body using the fat as I mentioned. Um, so again, it just reduces the rate of women having to undergo very complex, uh, say breast removal mastectomy and then more complex reconstruction procedure. Recovery is very quick. They're relatively painless compared to some of the more extensive procedures, I guess. And they wake up basically with a pretty good cosmetic outcome. You might say, well, why not just use a breast implant for reconstruction? That's pretty simple too, and sort of overnight hospital stay. But breast implants will cause more general problems, complications, uh, infections can happen. And there's always some ongoing maintenance with implants, whereas this is pretty well a one-step procedure uh, that's robust and will uh, you know, last uh, a long time because uh, it uses the patient's own natural tissue. Uh, so that's the key. One of the aspects of volume replacement too that I didn't mention is that you don't need to change the opposite breast. In other words, you don't need to do matching surgery on the other breast. If a patient prefers to avoid surgery on the other breast, we can just treat the breast cancer on the side that it's involved and match that breast to the other breast more. So it also avoids contralateral surgery for the patient if they want to avoid that. That's another you know, potential benefit there. Many people have heard of liposuction, which is a cosmetic procedure for some patients who want to get rid of sort of unsightly or excess fat in the body. This now takes that procedure, which is quite a traumatic procedure if you're just removing it, but we've adapted the procedure over many years and there are several um, machines uh, developed for this which actually treat the fat super gently. Uh, we remove it in a very gentle way because this fat is li literally like liquid gold now and we want to put it back to make sure it survives and we, we traumatize it as little as possible so that most of the fat then has to take uh, and the body um, basically will sort of re, uh, um, I guess, re-adapt itself to take that fat on board, new blood vessels form. Uh, and uh, the fat then regenerates. And in fact, it's um, shown to also improve the tissues after radiotherapy, which damages the normal tissues. And so it can reduce scar formation and tissue distortion after radiotherapy. So it's, it's a great procedure. And a lot of people are using it in many different cases, not just with breast conservation, but even uh, over breast, breast implant reconstruction. But really, this is part of regenerative medicine and it's a very exciting area. Uh, so I think that technology is going to only improve with time. Breast surgery in particular, we, we, we talk about the concept of shared decision making and this is exemplified in, in breast cancer surgery because the very initial decision is sort of mastectomy removing the breast versus keeping part of the breast and conserving the breast. This was something that was established years ago that either alternative is as safe in terms of the cancer outcomes. Overall shared decision making, we're, we're really just trying to help the patient make decisions depending on their own priorities. So if their priority, for example, is to have chemotherapy uh, as soon as possible after surgery because that's really important for their disease uh, control and prevention of further disease, then we want to get them, get, get them recovered as quickly as possible, get them out of hospital as quickly and get on with their lives. We try and guide them as to what might be the best thing. At the end of the day, the patients will try and choose and trade off um, what works for them the best 
uh, in the long run. Survival is so good nowadays that we've got to look forward to survival issues and we know that as women go forward one, two, three years beyond their surgery, they're going to be more concerned about their aesthetic outcomes and their functional outcomes. So this is really important to try and bring the patient back to that scenario early on. Um, and whilst you're of course treating the cancer in the optimal way, you want to improve all those other outcomes for the longer term as well.